Welcome to NetSuite refresher number seven, fixed asset management. NetSuite offers a great module for managing fi fixed assets. When looking at it, it can look intimidating and complicated, but once you start to use it, um, I hope that this refresher today will show you that there are a lot of useful ways to use the fixed asset management module in NetSuite. And it's a, it's a very helpful way to provide a link between your general ledger and your records and your information that is kept in NetSuite. So today we're going to talk about a few things. We're gonna talk about asset and depreciation types in NetSuite. We're gonna talk about how to create assets in NetSuite how to run depreciation, how to make changes to fixed assets such as revaluation and disposal, a few of the fixed asset management reports, and the benefits of NetSuite's fixed asset management module. In NetSuite, there are different asset and depreciation types. So I'm going to switch over to NetSuite and I'm gonna show you there's an example of a fixed asset type. A fixed asset type is an asset group that is used for reporting and for processing. Um, and so this is an example in Endora of a fixed asset type for machinery, for fixed assets that would fall into this group of ma machinery. Now, if you wanted to create a fixed asset type, you go to fixed assets, set up asset types and new. So for example, vehicles could be an asset type, computers, equipment, furniture, buildings, etc. So here we have a um, example of a fixed asset type for machinery. A description is warehouse machinery. I know that most of our ministries will not have this, but it's just an example. You pick a you pick an accounting method that is going to be the default method. So that we have, if this is your depreciation method, straight line annual. So you're depreciating these machines on a straight basis, same amount every period. The asset lifetime is five. So that's five periods of depreciation and it's depreciated annually. So that would be five years. Here you would enter any residual percentage. That's the value that the asset will be worth at the end of its lifetime. You can do a percentage, you can do an amount. And then you can also under accounts, this sub tab, you put all the associated fixed asset accounts. So we have a machinery account, which is going to be an account on your balance sheet of a, a one seven something under equipment, a de accumulated depreciation account, which is going to also be on your balance sheet, and the depreciation expense account. Now, one thing that is a little bit um, complicated currently with NetSuite is that in the fixed asset module, you can see the global accounts in this page when you're setting up your assets. So when you are trying to select your asset account for your ministry, it might be very hard to scroll, scroll through hundreds of accounts. But just note that this fix is on the list of things that we want to improve in NetSuite so that you can only see your own. That will make setting up asset types much, much easier in the future. So this asset is type is set up. Another thing that is in the fixed asset management module is depreciation methods. So I'm going to go to depreciation methods. And you can see that NetSuite has a lot of depreciation methods. Um, and this is the formula of how it's calculated. The most common in our ministry would be straight line annual and straight line, which is a monthly. There are other options of alternate depreciation methods. You can see here, those are, an asset may have more than one method of depreciation. 
The alternate method would be for tax purposes. It might be depreciated differently for tax purposes. So you can set up an alternate method. Let me go back to our presentation. Asset types are asset groups for reports and processing. They set up default accounts, depreciation, and the useful life for an asset. Depreciation types, NetSuite has multiple depreciation methods to choose from. The most common methods in our organization are straight line annual and straight line monthly. Alternate depreciation methods can be selected for a single asset for tax reporting purposes. Something to note that in NetSuite, asset lifetime equals the number of depreciation periods over the useful life of an asset. So if an asset is being depreciated straight line annual over three years, so that means it's going to be, it's going to be depreciated once a year over three years. So it has an asset lifetime of three. There are three depreciation periods. If an asset is being depreciated straight line monthly over three years, it's being depreciated for 36 months, the asset lifetime should be 36. The next thing we can talk about is creating assets. There are three ways to create assets. So I'm going to go to back to our NetSuite instance. There are three ways to create assets. So I'm going to fixed assets. I can go to transactions, or sorry, fixed assets lists, assets, new. This is how you can create an asset manually. If you just wanna ins in, um, insert all of the assets information, you fill in all the information. You make sure you choose your type here. So here I'm going to pick um, machinery and my residual value, my method, it all fills for me, but I could change it if I need to. Then you're gonna put down the purchase date, when your depreciation is gonna start, your entity. There's a lot of options here. The accounts should pre-fill the accounts set to use based on the asset type. So you put in all the information to the asset and save it and it will give the asset an ID number and then you can begin to track it. Um, you can see there's a lot of other information here. You can attach a file, like if it's a building, perhaps you can attach a copy of the title deed, insurance information, maintenance information. And then if you were to sell it, it would save the information of the disposal right along with the asset. So that when you create an asset manually, there's two parts. First, you create the record here. Then you need to create a journal entry to create the transaction. When you create the record, it's just a record. It's not on your balance sheet yet. You have to create a journal entry with the fixed asset account and the other relevant accounts. So we'll look at a journal entry in a minute. That's one way to create a fixed asset. Another way to create a fixed asset is to propose an asset. So you would do that from fixed assets, transactions, asset proposal. What this does is it finds all the new transaction entries from bills and journals with fixed assets account accounts. So here's an example of a bill that was created from, this was a bill from North Packaging Equipment. And you can see that it is for family life, a family life book packaging machine for 2,799 euros. And when the bill was created, the account that was used instead of an expense account, because this is a fixed asset, it was a fixed asset account was entered directly and it has been charged to family life. It's the responsibility center, which is actually, if, if you know, if you're aware that that's incorrect, it should be charged to responsibility center, none. 
because it's on the balance sheet, right? So this has been charged. This is outstanding. Another way you could enter a bill with fixed asset via an item. If you had an item set up with fixed asset accounts, you can enter it that way as well. Another way you can enter the purchase of fixed asset is through a journal. So this is an example of a journal for an SLM machine. You can see right here. So the way it was entered was a journal debit, the machinery fixed assets account for a thousand euros, RC none. Credit your bank, RC none. Debit the equipment purchase, which is this is an account for capital expenses. And this is where you are going to charge your responsibility center. So SLM will be paying only once for this. And then you're going to credit the same capital expense account, but RC none. What that does is it removes the expense from your income and expense report, but it keeps it charged to SLM so that the leader can see it on their RC report. And then as the machine is depreciated, that expense will slowly get added back into your income and expense report. So now that we have these two assets, a machine and a, a SLM machine and a packaging machine, packing machine, let's go ahead and propose it. Let's go to fixed assets, transactions and asset proposal. And you'll notice I am logged in as an accountant right now. I'm gonna select world headquarters. I'm gonna propose things from today and I'm gonna look for the, machinery. This is uh, where knowing exactly what the name of your asset type is called will be helpful so you can find it easily. Now I'm going to propose. You can see it's thinking. And this is the list of all of my fixed asset processes. An asset proposal is queued, but I can refresh. It's in progress. So while that's in progress, I'll tell you the third way that you can create an asset. It's through a CSV import. There is a template you can fill out with your fixed assets, all the information needed to get them into NetSuite. And that one is only used to import midlife assets, which means an asset that is partially depreciated. Um, and it's usually done during NetSuite implementation. So when you're starting in NetSuite for the first time and you're trying to bring in your net your fixed assets and the balances related to them into NetSuite. Let's see how this is doing. It's completed. See, I can see the details if I want. But right now, the way to look at this would be go to fixed assets, transactions, and now we're going to manage our asset proposal. Okay, so look at this. I can see a lot of assets. So these are not these are not turned into fixed assets yet. This is where I can choose what is going to be turned into fixed assets. So I see my my packing machine for family life. So I'm going to select that, and I see my here it is my journal one thousand here. Or I'm going to select that. These other ones, I'm not so sure about what they are at this point. So I'm going to select the two I do know and say, go ahead, let's turn these into fixed assets. So I'm going to generate assets. Okay. So this will probably take me back to my process. Yes, asset generation is queued. Let's refresh that. So let's go back to our, our presentation and while this is working. So as a reminder, there are three ways to create assets. The first is manually in two steps. By the, part A would be to create the record. 
And part B is to create the transaction with a journal entry. Remember, it's going to be four lines. You're going to have your fixed asset account, your method of payment, like a payable or bank account. You're going to have your expense, capital expense charge to the RC, and then you're going to have a capital expense credit uh, with an RC none. You're going to, another way is to propose assets either through bills or journals that have used fixed asset accounts. It searches for them, and then after you propose them, you can manage it and generate the assets. The third way is through a CSV import for midlife assets that are imported during NetSuite implementation. And the best practice really is to propose assets. And the reason for that is it keeps the link between the general ledger and the fixed assets, between the GL and the records. So you can easily click on the fixed asset record and you can find all the transactions related to it. You can see the purchase date, you can see the bill, you can see the vendor you purchased it from. It keeps that link. If you create it manually, there is no link. You just have to search through your general ledger to find the transaction. All right, let's go back and see if this is done. Completed. I think. Yes. So let's go look at our asset list. I'm going to refresh it. This was outstanding. Here we go. Here are all of our fixed assets. You can see that I have a t-shirt screen printer, a t-shirt screen printing machine. So two of those, folding machine, a forklift. Um, this I'll explain in a minute. And then this auto-generated asset, which it did not name, I think, because there was no name in the description. So I can edit that. That would be the SLM machine. And then this packing machine for family life. So you can see the depreciation method, the asset lifetime and the status. So here I've got a few that are depreciating monthly and some that are depreciating annually, the five and the 60. All of the ones with new have not been depreciated yet. Depreciating, they have had, a, had depreciation. If it says component, that means it's like a family of assets. So for example, they are a component, these t-shirt screen printing machines of asset 955 t-shirt printing. So let's view that. This is called a compound asset. And what this does is it groups them together in a family. So you can see that the total value of these assets t-shirt printing assets is 7,000. If I want to see my sub assets or my, where would that be? Components, sorry. You can see that these assets are listed. When we create assets, it is our practice to charge a responsibility center for the full amount of a fixed asset upon purchase. So this ensures that leaders can lead with information. So if they have, if a leader has budgeted for a large expense, then once it is purchased, that expense is charged to a specific responsibility center so that they see that leader in charge of that center can see that expense once set up to create a fixed asset with no expense. So when we propose the asset, asset, it does not do what we need it to do. So we need to create a journal entry for all assets that are proposed. So we would debit a capital expense account. So for the type of expense that it is, equipment or vehicles, whatever it is, and charge that to a ministry RC. And then we would credit the same capital expense account with the RC none. So that means that you are removing the expenses from your income and expense, um, income and expense report. You're moving it, removing it. And then when you do the depreciation, a depreciation expense will slowly get um, charged to your ministry. Some interesting information that can be tied to the fixed assets to the record in NetSuite is it keeps track of the asset type and account, uh, all of the depreciation information, 
the asset details, asset location, asset history, when it was purchased, if it was revalued, if it was disposed, insurance information, lease information, inspections, maintenance info, warranties, et cetera. So I'll show you in NetSuite, here's my list of as fixed assets. This one that has started depreciating, this forklift, I'm gonna open it and we can look at the asset in more detail. So you can see there's the name and the ID, a description. The asset type is machinery. The asset original cost was 11,500 euros. The current cost is the same um, the, because it has never been revalued. The depreciation method is straight line over 60 periods monthly. You can see over here, monthly. It is depreciating, so it has started being depreciated. The net va book value is 11,308.33 euros. So we've had 191.67 euros of depreciation, one period. You can, it also keeps track of the purchase date, when it's going to be fully depreciated, you can keep track of if it's in a warehouse, you can assign a custodian, that's the person in charge of this asset, and then uh, make note of where it's located. You can have notes on it, files, the list of accounts, you can keep insurance information, maintenance information. I've already mentioned components, tax information. If, if you sell it, it's all here. So you can see, here's my depreciation history. And I can look at the details if I want. For depreciation, we would go to fixed assets, transaction, asset depreciation. So going back to here, well, here's my list. I'm going to go to fixed assets, transactions, depreciation, asset depreciation and I can depreciate my assets. Now see what I said, you can see every single asset type in the world. Um, and that is going to be fixed. But for now I'm choosing machinery and the depreciation period. Let's do it for the 31st of July. So anything that's depreciating monthly that has not yet been depreciated will be depreciated. Depreciation reference, that's just a memo. So I'll say July 2021 depreciation. And I'm going to depreciate my assets. And it is queued. All right, so while that is doing this, I'm gonna show you something else that you can do in NetSuite. If you want to need to dispose of an asset, you can go to Fixed Assets, Transactions, Asset Disposal. So you choose what type of disposal a sale or a write-off. If the, you have another kind of disposal, you, it's possible you can you can add types of dis disposal such as theft. But if it's a sale, then you have an option to put in a customer. And when you save the sale, it will create an invoice for you. That suite will. And you can put the date, you put fill in which asset you're disposing of and it will fill in all of the information and then the amount that you're going to sell it for. And then you dispose of it. It will remove the depreciation and the fixed asset from your general ledger. Another option is a write-off. So you would choose the asset and then you say how many of them you're going to dispose of. If you have one, you say one and it just disposes it. You can also do a revaluation. So for some reason, let's say you need to change the value, you need to reduce the value down of your building by 10% because it's overvalued. So for let's say for this instance, the forklift. So we would need, 
we could write it down. 10%. And when you put in a write down percentage, it will change the cost, the, the value of the current cost here. We'll adjust it down by 10%, or you can just put down an actual amount you want to change it to. Put in a negative number if you need to increase the value. All right, let's check on our status of, where was it? Here it is, our status of our depreciation. Okay, now I'll go to our asset list. And you can see, oh, we have a lot more of them are depreciating. All the t-shirt, the t-shirt printing group is depreciating. So let's view it. And I'm going to look at, you can see the last depreciation amount, the last depreciation date. So it's pretty simple. If, for example, if you are depreciating monthly and you miss four months of depreciation, you, like, you forgot to run it, you do have to run it. When you go and you run depreciation, it will run all of the months that you missed. Okay. Changes to fixed assets. You can revalue, adjust the true value of the asset, and you can dispose. That will remove the asset and its depreciation from the general ledger. For a sale, it creates an invoice, or you can do a write-off. Reports. When you go to fixed assets, reports, generate reports. Once generated, you can find them in fixed assets, reports, my reports. Some helpful reports are fixed asset register, a depreciation schedule, fixed asset list, et cetera. Now let's talk about the benefits of NetSuite's fixed asset management module. For one, it's easy reporting and tracking. Once you get the asset type set up, that's the most difficult part. Once you get all of the setup work done, it's easy to report and track. All of your asset information and records can be kept all in one place. And the most important thing is it keeps the link between the general ledger and the asset. So that's all for today. We've talked about asset and depreciation types, creating assets, depreciation, changes to fixed assets like revaluation and disposal, reports, the benefits of NetSuite's fixed asset management. There are a lot of helpful information or are there is, I should say, a lot of helpful information on fixed asset management. Um, for one, um, you can click on this link in the PowerPoint that I will attach to the refresher, is the Help Scout docs on fixed assets. There's several different documents with step-by-step -step, uh, instructions on how to do things in the fixed asset management. Number two, and I want to highlight this, is the NetSuite Training Company Pass Courses. So our organization, CCCI, has purchased a NetSuite Training Company Pass that lasts until February of 2022. So this means that any course from Oracle NetSuite, any of those courses that they offer are available to you for free. And sometimes some of these courses can cost almost a thousand US dollars. So this can be a great opportunity for you to learn. So there, the link in this attachment to this power, PowerPoint or slide deck has instructions of how to sign up for a course. Regarding fixed assets, I would recommend fixed asset management tutorials and fixed assets management curriculum. The first one is about 30 minutes and the second one is, it, is about 50 minutes. And there's no work you have to do, it's just watching. You can also always look on the NetSuite help topics within NetSuite itself. And that is all for today. Hopefully this will get you excited and interested about setting up fixed assets within NetSuite and um, persevering through the setup phase to be able to use it on a regular basis. It really is a useful tool. Thanks.